Well, welcome everyone. We're right at the top of the hour, so I think we'll get started on our session. Um, that brings us to talk about best practices for optimizing SQL viewpoint. I want to welcome everyone today. Um, I'm Cheryl Quinlan. I'm the support manager uh, here at Fortra. And of course, Fortra was previously known as Help Systems. We're the same folks that have been supporting SQL and viewpoint for, for years. We're just doing it under a slightly different name. No, no, nothing's been bought or sold. We've just changed our name and changed our color. Um, so we're now um, do things more in a green palette than in a blue palette. Um, but I assure you our support team is all here still ready and willing to help whenever the questions arise. Today we've got kind of a quick agenda. This is just a 30 minute session. And we're going to talk about some best practices along with all of the different objects that we have within SQL. You know, I know that you've got a lot of options out there in terms of what tools you use. And even once you say, okay, in my toolbox, I'm going to use SQL Viewpoint, there's a lot of options within Viewpoint. And that's what we're going to try to uncover today is what is the best approach and when to use which piece of SQL. And we're just going to kind of go along that ride for the next um, little bit. And I will have a couple polling questions at the end of the session because I am curious how do you use Viewpoint best? You know, are there areas of Viewpoint in future sessions that we could expound on? So, getting started, you know, we've got all these objects and the view is the central piece of these objects because the view is what extracts the data from your files. Without the view, you can't really do anything else. And so from the view, you have all of these other options and you may not have touched on all of them. And some of them we even kind of have repeats of. For instance, with the tables, we have a host version of the table and we also have a client version of the table. The same with reports. And even with scripts, we have two different types of scripts. We have the script and we have the script view. And then we have something called applications that we're going to um, try to piece together this puzzle so that at least you're familiar with what is in your toolbox. When you're looking at kind of how to approach your query request, one of the things to keep in mind is what is the goal? What do you want to do with that data and how are you going to be delivering it and running it? Is it just going to be a quick display from viewpoint where either you or someone else is going to come along and click and they're going to get your results? Or maybe you want to email it and then when you email it or even create a file, you need to consider what format you want that file in because that will also help you make a decision on where you can branch out on the different objects within SQL. You know, sometimes you might want to graph the data. And one thing I didn't even put on that wheel was dashboards. That's a whole topic within itself where you can graph data beautifully and display it either from viewpoint, you know, on the PC or from the browser in SQL web interface. And then kind of lingering out there, you may not realize this, but we can um, easily have any of these most of these requests scheduled to run in your preferred job scheduler. So let's just take a look at the views for a minute. And sometimes a view is just enough um, for what you need and it all depends what you need. On the left, I have just a straight up, you know, list of, of, of data. This is, you know, customers and their orders. That you can get pretty easily from the view, but you don't have to stop there. I can, from the view results, go ahead and do a little bit of formatting and a little bit of calculating. I can add odd even coloring. I can put in a subtotal, so I have a subtotal at each customer break. I can even put some KPIs in, some key performance indicators that allow me to highlight a number when it's over a value. I've, I've chosen to highlight my extended price if it's over $20,000. Now, when I put all that 
razzmatazz, if you will, in my view results, I can save that with the view. And each time someone runs the view, they would see that extra formatting. But a lot of times I know the end result is Excel. And depending upon how you take this data to Excel, you may or may not get the extra features that we've overlaid on those view results. Now, probably the quickest way to get your results to Excel is just to open it in Excel. And you can do that so easily from what we call the Viewpoint Explorer screen, which is your list of objects. And if you right click on any on a view, there is an option on the second option it says display and results. And that is probably the fastest way to take data and open it in Excel. Now, when you do that, you won't get all of the extra formatting like the odd even coloring um, and the subtotals, but that's all information that you could do inside of Excel. Now, if you were to display that view first and from the results tab, go ahead and export that to Excel all of that formatting would stay. But if, if your end goal is Excel, I would say use SQL to get your data there and then go ahead and use um, Excel to do your extra calculations and formatting. We can even take you a step farther and use the Excel add-in from Viewpoint where you are pulling the data uh, from, you start in the Excel spreadsheet and pull the data down using Viewpoint. And then all your formatting is there and all your calculations. So sometimes with the views, while you design them, you'll realize that your file qualifiers are different. And this is probably our best tip for best practices, is to be consistent with those file qualifiers, meaning are they names, are they numbers, are they, is it field.file or file.field, and pick one standard and try to use it. It's become a little bit more complicated as Viewpoint has grown and become more complicated. Back in the day when we only had one type of syntax flavor, when we were only strictly our SQL syntax, it was pretty forgiving in terms of, oh, okay, I can use a file number, I can use a file name, I can have the file that file qualify either, either before the field name or after the field name. And, but we got a little bit more complicated when we introduced the server syntax or the native DB2 syntax. And that syntax only allows us one type of format, and that's file name dot field. And so if you're going to pick a way to be consistent, use that way because it will work in both flavors of the SQL. And I know it's hard to make these transitions when you've been a longtime SQL user and you've got lots of views, but do pay attention as you create new ones and even look at your viewpoint options to see what they're at as you create new. And then my biggest tip here is on the results is if you want Excel, then go straight to Excel. Either use that display in Excel option or use the plugin. And now here's another one. If you want summarized data, use a group by clause. You know, don't, don't drag all the data and then put subtotals on the results and really only try to find the subtotals. Make the SQL do your, your summarizing for you. And the beautiful part about both SQL Web Interface and Viewpoint is if you start out with a summarized result, we have dynamic drill down. So I can, if I see a number that's I need to dig into, you know, some kind of exception, I can go to that row, right click and pick some fields and dig in immediately to find out what makes up that number. And then just keep in mind that most of your options to get to Excel are not going to include those subtotals except the export. Now we're going to talk briefly about host tables. Host tables are an, another object. You still want to start with the view. And they're tables that exist strictly 
on the host. They're just like our view. They're another user space object. But what they help you do is kind of spin the data on its side. If you look on the left, I've got data from the view and it's just, again, customer orders. What I've done through the host table is basically created a pivot table. I have summarized my rows by sales region and I'm spreading across my data into columns by the customer type. And that is so easy to do with a host table. It's just a, defining the rows, the, the columns and what you wanna add up. And then you can add in some subtotaling, uh, even grand totaling. Um, my result has a grand total at the bottom. I've also added a horizontal total as my far right column. Now, the thing to keep in mind though, is with a host table, there is minimal formatting. I cannot get an extra blank line between subtotals. It's just kind of what you see is what you get. Um, but the beautiful part about host tables is they have a lot of output options like creating Excel spreadsheets and all other PC file types. And if you want, the totals will be included along with that data. Now, just keep in mind, if you are building a view that is strictly for a host table, there's really no need to create an order by. The order by is what sort the, sorts the records. And it can, can add a little bit of processing time, but the host table is gonna process all of the records before it shows you anything. So we don't really care what order we see the records in. Our other type of table is a client table. and These are really, they're fun. They offer a lot of flexibility to whoever runs them. Now you do, um, you know, they are PC based. So if you don't have viewpoint installed, you can kind of you can put on what we call the client table viewer, kind of a, a client table light, which just allows you to, to run a, a saved client table output file. But the key here is that it's interactive. You can start with gobs of data and then you can massage this result to um, not add in year and start summarizing by year and not just by product. Later on, you change your mind, you drag the year field back up. We could spend um, a lot, a, a good session alone just on playing with client tables and what you can do from there. And um, we actually do have a couple of really good videos on our portal on these client tables. The best practice to keep in mind about client tables is to include all the fields in your view of the select clause that you could possibly ever want in your client table. It is a little bit harder to go back and so just try to think ahead, plan ahead, and include everything. Now, now we're gonna talk about reports. And our tried and true report writer is our host report. And it does a nice job of formatting data. There's not a lot of flexibility in terms of glitz and glam because we're creating a spool file. So we're limited to what a spool file on the IBMI allows us. But looking at this output, I've stacked customer data. I've got some um, spacing around my column headings. I've suppressed detail. I've done some things with the calculations. I've counted number of orders and you can't see this, but I've got, I've got subtotals out at the end. I've got some grand totals. I could, could have gotten a lot fancier with the calculations as well with conditional logic. Um, but this creates a really nice report. And the key here is that they can be emailed as PDF. And that's probably where we've seen them used the most. So a couple things to keep in mind about host reports is it's the opposite here as host tables. The order by clause is really important. It creates the level breaks in your report. So that controls when you can get subtotals is based upon how you sort it in the view. There's a whole lot more formatting and calculations options, um, and they're, they're fun to work with. But PC file types, if you're just in viewpoint and you're right clicking to create a file, you're limited to just text and RTF for your file types. But if you email them you're, the results, you're able to also create a PDF and an HTML file. And I have to say PDF is probably the most um, standard way 
um, and favorite way of delivering these host reports because they're they look nice and clean and then no one can touch the output it's it's not um, it can't be changed our other type of reports are client reports and these are fancy these i actually wanted to make sure that you believed me that this was actually a report output and that i didn't really build a powerpoint slide so that's why i, I chose to put this screenshot in because this report um, the heading is fancy the color coding is fancy the bar chart along mixed with the data is fancy there is a lot of power here um, and i would encourage you to dabble in here and and to play if you'd like to now our next object type that we want to touch on are scripts and script views and it is sort of confusing why we have two and and when you hear our explanation to say well um, a script view is a script that acts like a view um, it all has to do with the output with a script whoever designed that script decides what the output should be with the script view whoever runs it gets to decide what the output should be think of a, a real minimal um, script and scripts are used for multi-step processes and most of the time you're building a work file and then using that in a, in a later query so i've got an execute that builds an out file and on the left i've got my script and it builds the file and then i have on my first example there i have a display and so the designer has decided that after i build the work file and i run my final view i'm going to display this to the screen now that's all i can do with that script i can just display now otherwise we the designer of the script could have set this up so that we build the out file and then we email the results say as excel i'm kind of on an excel kick today i could have even made the recipient parameter for the email address a variable but that script would then only email and that's the key here now in a script view whoever runs this gets to decide what happens when i have a multi-step process and it can be a lot of steps not just a single execute my final command would be an sc return command which, which is a sql command and it uses my final view and that way when i'm in viewpoint and i'm deciding that i want to run my script view any one of those options that works on a view would work here for instance the display in excel um, the emailing the, the straightaway just display in viewpoint and that's where the power of script views come from couple things to keep in mind as you build scripts for your ibm i connections those that are just your standard let's go get some data off the ibm i it's best to be consistent with the server and the syntax parameters what i mean by that is your server parameter is where you set whether you want a sql connection or a local sys connection when you're going to the ibm i depending upon which connection you use depends upon which query processor gets used under the covers nowadays we do recommend local sys because that uses the sqe which is the faster query processor when you pick local sys you have the option on the syntax to write your view in our sql flavor of sql or what we call server meaning the native db2 flavor of sql well we recommend that for your script because it's all going to run in this one job that we not mix and match that too much when you pick local sys for your server and you pick sql under the covers we have an extra step in order for us to pass that request off to the SQE, we have to um, translate that SQL from the SQL flavor to the native DB2 flavor. And that all happens seamlessly. You, you probably don't even realize it's happening, but we know it's happening because we had to start a Java job in order to do that. And then if we come around and make it go switch to the CQE with a SQL SQL, it does get a, it's not the best. And so be consistent. And that is, my, my strongest advice about scripts. 
my other one, which is probably just as strong, I, I take it back, is about using QString variables in a script. A QString variable automatically puts double quotes around a value. And in a script, what you're doing is you're building command strings. And when we have those double quotes, it can create havoc for us in terms of writing out the command string properly. So we say in a script, just use expression variables. Even if you're passing the value to something um, that is a Q string in the view. And we're happy to help you set that up so that you can see um, what happens. And then in terms of results, I just said have fun with script views because that is where the power lies within these, within the scripts. Then I have one other thing to mention here. And if you have a favorite, why not create a shortcut? If there's some view or some table that you run all the time, every day, once a week, whatever it is, did you know that you can create a shortcut? If you find that view within your viewpoint explorer, right click on it, there's an option that says create shortcut. That'll pop up the window that I show at the bottom, and you can decide what do you want to do with this shortcut. Most likely you're going to display it, but you can also automatically make it email to you. Um, and that way when you just, you don't have to fire up viewpoint, so to speak, you just click on this dot VPT, the shortcut, wherever it lives on your desktop, and it is off and running. Now, that's maybe a lot of tidbits of information and what I want to do is take a second and stop and ask you a question. I am going to launch my polling question. I want to know, it would be really helpful for us to know, um, what are you using now? What, what is your favorite SQL object besides a view? I mean, everybody's has to be the view because that's the starting point for everything. But are, do you use a lot of reports? Are you using tables? Do you use a ton of scripts? And I will take a second here and, and let you fill in an answer or two. And I wish I could have broken this down even a little bit more to see. Ah, we've got a lot of, lot of script users out here. It looks like, it looks like we've got a, several responses. There's someone for reports. Um, I still love the host report. I've been using SQL a long time and, and I think um, it's maybe undervalued, but definitely scripts and script views are, are a crowd favorite here with dashboards and actually the tables kind of tying for seconds. Um, interesting. Yeah, the dashboards are very powerful, and I didn't even want to touch on that because I think the dashboards can have its all, their own session, and um, we are. Um, and I think you'll see a session on dashboards later this year. Okay. Well, thank you for that information. I'm going to close that one. And now here, here's what would help me in the future. We do these webinars, you know, periodically through the year, once a quarter. Um, and what is it you'd like to hear about? If you, if you can give us a clue, if you'd want us to do a deeper dive into script views, because those are so popular, um, or like I said, I gave you a sneak preview. You are going to see here one on dashboards, probably more towards the end of the year. Um, applications, that's something I did not touch on a lot today. Um, again, that can be a, a topic on its own. It utilizes variables very heavily to do a very controlled drill down path. And um, besides dashboards, applications came in second. And maybe that's a good topic for our next one, given um, my advice is, you know, if you don't want to see all the details, don't drag it all with you. And Applications allow you to start summary level and then to take um, dig into that detail and go even beyond what our dynamic drill down does. And you can have a very controlled path through um, your drill down. 
Well, thank you for that. I appreciate your um, your answers because that does help us as we go forward. Now, in addition to, uh, um, do you have any questions about anything I've brought up today, or questions about SQL that that we can address as the group, or you know, always we can take offline. Keep in mind that we are always here to help with your answers and. The best way to reach us is really through our community portal. That's community.portra.com. And you can open up cases there. And um, you can still reach us by the phone. We still really like to talk about um, and, and help solve problems. And a lot of times you might open up a portal case, but we might say, hey, do you mind if we get you on the phone? Um, sometimes it's a little bit easier that way. You can reach out to us um, through email. But we're here and we're we're happy to help. And I just want to make sure that I don't see so far any questions out here from the group. But hopefully you found some of value in what I've talked about today. And um and we're just approaching the, the bottom of the hour, which gives me right here on time, and maybe a lot of you gotta run off and find some lunch. But I truly do appreciate um, you attending and also for your responses. And we look forward to helping you with whatever SQL object it is you'd like to work with in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye.